what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the motherland experience it's your girl nye here and today i have a wonderful dynamic guest for you i am sitting down here at the beautiful serenity house ghana as i'm going to be chatting with mama malanga as she describes with us her journey of coming here since the 70s you heard me right since the 70s she's going to be giving us a lot of insight on her experience here her lows her triumphs her being a business owner here among other things as well trust me you you guys don't want to miss it. So sit back, relax, and let me take you for a ride. Hey guys, I am sitting here with a dynamic woman. I have to say, I mean, wisdom, she has got it. This lady has been here for since the 70s. Yes, you heard correctly, since the 70s. I'm gonna be sitting here chatting with her because she has so much wisdom to impart in you and also impart in me as well. So please help me welcome Miss Mama Malenga to the show. How Good are afternoon. you? Good afternoon, <laughs> Mama Malenga. How are you? By God's grace, really great. Amen, amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the channel. It's an honor. Yeah. It really I is. Love it. I love you. Aww. I love the camera. I know. He's awesome. <laughs> he's Shout out to Jeff, pie. guys. <laughs> he really is. And like I said, you have so much. I think you're the first person I've interviewed on the channel that has been here for so long. Mm. And yeah, you really have. I mean, it's it's been it's awesome. So really, I want to hear your journey because you've heard it all, seen it all, been through it all, you know. So please, can you share with us kind of like, you know, first of all, where are you from? Uh, originally from Ohio, Kentucky. Those are my roots. Okay. And I um, have a brother and a sister, mm -hmm. and they're both still with us, thank goodness. And I went to school in Ohio, the Ohio State University. Oh, okay. And, and that's, I, they started putting <laughs> that the on there after I left. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> and we're strong opponents of Michigan. But that's okay. Shout out to <laughs> Michigan, guys. And also California. Ah, uh, can't always forget beat Cali. Them. Yeah, we beat them every time, too. In the, <laughs> he said we beat the them Rose, every time. In the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. But, no, that's not true. But anyway, um, I've had a wonderful journey here in Africa. Mm -hmm. My the Most of the time I've been in Africa has been spent in Ghana. Okay. When I first arrived in Africa, it was... Uh, 53 years ago, October wow. the 6th, and I spent some time in Liberia. Mm -hmm. I stopped in Liberia because I thought it was going to be similar to the United States. I didn't know anybody in Africa. Mm, okay. So I was yeah. trying to acclimate myself, not knowing, and this is not anything against Liberia, mm -hmm. but it's more like West Virginia. Really? Why, so, uh, why, why, why so? Uh, um, to be as uh, independent as they have been over the years, it's very rural. Mm -hmm. The only city at that time was Monrovia. Mm -hmm. And even then it was one major street and blah, blah, blah. So it, it didn't give you a good feel of what you wanted if you were trying to progress in Africa at that gotcha. time. Right now, they are trying to really push themselves because they're coming out of the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it's an exciting time for young people. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I didn't enjoy Liberia that much. Mm -hmm. But I, I can see where if they continue on the path they're on, that they will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh. Because of the young people. I believe right. their average... Uh, age there now is something like 16 to 18 years old. Really? Because of the war that killed off all of us old people. And, uh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and so they're building their own culture now, you know, which uh, is good or bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that's a good thing. I really feel that youth, they almost have like a spark that's like a maybe can make a difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that that doesn't happen by accident. No. It really doesn't. It doesn't happen by accident. So with the countries that you've been to on the continent, why Ghana? What makes Ghana for you feel so comfortable? At that time, mm -hmm. um, Ghana was just coming out of the Nkrumah age, mm, and which okay. meant that uh, people had hope, they were energetic, there were so many projects going on, um, factories were everywhere, mm -hmm. 
And um, it was just the time that when you stepped off the plane, you kind of bowed down and kissed the ground, really. Right. Not, not, not in your mind, but really. And you said, okay, I have arrived. Right now, it's not the same. You don't have that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, case in point, when I first arrived in Africa, somebody would uh, yell across the street, I love you, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm going like, hey, you don't even know me. <laughs> right, it's like, I don't know you, <laughs> you say you love me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and that's happened to me a couple of times, and they would, guys would go, mm. I want to give you something. Well, you know, coming from the States, you're going like, yeah, right. Right, you know? <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> not, not so much. Mm. But uh, being adventuresome, I was mm. 25 at the time. Oh, you were and young. And so okay. I was trying to, you know, go with the flow, so to speak. Right. And so I did manage to meet a whole lot of new people because of having that openness. Yeah. I wouldn't have that right now because people have changed in their mindset. But mm -hmm. at that time, it was like a loving, giving basket of right, love and care. And somebody would invite you to their house or their auntie's house and give you a big bowl of rice with some stew on top. And I made the mistake of eating all the rice and stew the first time. <laughs> and then we say, oh, well, well, let's go visit my other auntie. And then she would give you a big plate of rice and oh, stew. Oh, well, so you had like a double dose of like yeah. rice and stew. And then by the time they would say, OK, well, my grandmother wants to see you. I'll mm -hmm. go, OK, tomorrow. Because <laughs> it's like, I can't know. feel anymore <laughs> in my belly. So with you saying that you have seen a progression kind of in Ghana, you know, kind of for, in that way, a little bit more, you were saying there, then it was a little more free. It was a little more, the mentality was different versus now. Yeah. So um, would you say over the time that you've been here, how have you seen Ghana change in a good way? Um, and I don't want to say that that was a bad way. I'm just mm. saying that's the way right. that it's changed, you mm -hmm. know, uh, if, um, you don't have the expectation that what I have grown into mm -hmm. and many people that are part of that generation of people that came the same time I did. Yeah. If you didn't know mm -hmm. that that's the way it was, mm -hmm. you would be perfectly happy with the way it is right now. You see? Oh, I understand. But because I have something to compare with mm -hmm. that, hey, when I first came, it's like their whole home was open. I came with my savings at that time, which was $2,000. Mm -hmm. And I lived the whole year for $2,000. Wow. Yeah, it can't even live a, a week in uh -uh. Ghana. <laughs> you can't, can't even. Ghana is, is expensive, guys. It really is. I mean, some people like come here and they're like, where did my money go? You know, it's like you just spend your money so fast here. But back then, you kind of yes. could stretch a little bit more. You could stretch mm -hmm. and people helped you to stress because they were always inviting to your house. You could mm -hmm. go and spend the night Aww. with people you didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And I stayed at the YWCA. Well, they don't even have YWCA's yeah. here now. You know? So it, it, it's a change that I am so glad that I had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I met a young lady out of uh, New York. She was the same age as me. Mm -hmm. And she was traveling Africa on freighters. Mm -hmm. She would get a job on a freighter and whatever the next stop was, she would get off and explore that country. Mm -hmm. Well, when I met her, she had gotten off in Ghana and mm -hmm. was exploring Ghana and said to me, oh, our next stop is the Congo. Come and go with us. Uh -huh. But I had just arrived in Ghana and hadn't seen Ghana yet. Right. So you but wanted to see more of Ghana. Ghana. Mm -hmm. But gotcha. I always think of that, you know, mm -hmm. because think how many countries she was able to see, mm -hmm. you know, just by hop by working her way on the freighter. And it was mm -hmm. free. They were paying her to see Africa. Wow, that's yeah. a blessing. Yeah. She was the same age as me, mm -hmm. single. Mm -hmm. And a shout out to you New Yorkers. Shout she, out to New Yorkers, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I have forgotten her name, but I have always remembered that. And I thought, wow, that I kind of missed out on that. But oh, well, Ghana's everything happens for a reason. You know, you were supposed to be here. And with that being said, you know, kind of you've you've been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. And some diasporans feel like, oh, I can't take Ghana. Ghana's so difficult. You know, so what have been any challenges that you face and how have you overcome them through the years? Okay, um, every country is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've been to Nigeria mm -hmm. and uh, Benin and Togo. 
Well, Benin and Togo, I enjoyed them at that time, but mm -hmm. I couldn't speak French and mm -hmm. also went to Ivory Coast. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, and I've always told the story that Ivory Coast has the tall, dark, beautiful men. Oh, I've heard that too. That Is that true? Are, and very oh. giving, very <laughs> loving. And they will speak English, but they mm. like speaking French. And it's mm. such a beautiful language coming off of black man's lips. And so I was okay. always saying we to everything and found out that, <laughs> no, as a single woman, you don't do that. Don't you know, say, you know, like, don't <laughs> say we <laughs> to everybody. Don't say we to everybody. You know? Oh, man. So, mm -hmm. But uh, what I like now is that to grow old in Africa is probably the best place to be. When I look at some of my friends, they are in nursing homes in the States, yeah. uh, eight by 10 room, or I'm going to be generous and say 10 by 12 yeah. room. Yeah. And um, here I am. I mean, here we are, yes. you know, and you just came from my site or our site where we're trying to uh, build a mushroom uh, sanctuary, snails, habitat chickens, that kind of thing. And being 78, to walk around that whole compound just energizes me. Right, yeah. right. Who can get energized in the 12 by 10 Exactly. Room? And see, that's the thing about the West, you know, because I had a sick grandmother myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking what would have been like if she were to be here. You know, of course, she, um, she passed away before I came. But, you know, would her life been a little bit different, would have been prolonged, even mentally, mm -hmm. you know, because I see, you know, people here that are of a certain age and they're able to thrive. And mm -hmm. some diasporans are, you know, some are caring for their parents or don't want to leave their parents behind mm -hmm. or, you know, think that, oh, somebody who may be a certain age, well, I can't go to Ghana and get maybe healthier the services that I need since you are maybe in that age bracket what would you say to those people I would say that that's a fallacy because even last uh, week mm -hmm. we had uh, a, a um, doctor come to our meeting I oh I'm one of the founders of triple AG I guess I should mm. mention that oh yes yeah. shout um, out to triple AG amen <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a AAAG was created, which is African American Association of Ghana, mm -hmm. was uh, created um, 33 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, next two weeks, October the 30th, we will be having another anniversary. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, at our meetings, we try to educate everybody on all levels mm -hmm. about all kinds of things, housing, transportation, safety, health, etc. So in the health field, we had a doctor come in and mm -hmm. he mentioned the five, one of the five top hospitals or oh, medical okay. centers mm -hmm. that are here in Ghana. There were five that he mentioned mm -hmm. and uh, two of them were actually established by African-Americans. Oh, really? Luca, mm -hmm. I can't remember the second one. Oh, I've one. heard of Luca. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I what I've heard is excellent mm -hmm. um, um, care. Mm -hmm. You know, um, of course they have another one in Tema, mm -hmm. and I think that one was established by the British. I'm not sure, but I'm simply saying this that the health care is here mm -hmm. for the and they take um, uh, cards. What do you call oh those? yeah, medical. kind of like medical cards. cards yeah. Oh, that's great. So, that's wonderful. Health cards, mm -hmm. and so there, the um, thing that we don't have health care here. Mm -hmm. That there's a bunch of people that are taking some herbs and then putting in some water and then right. throwing some <laughs> some uh, apertesi in there exactly. to give it a kick. Right, a little spice. You know, this. <laughs> A little kick right there. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, some people don't feel well unless mm -hmm. they get that kick. So, you know, they throw that kick in for you. But no, we have um, what I'm going to say, legitimate health care. Mm -hmm. And then we have that health care, too, that is herbal. And the, we have a lot of people from the states that have brought their knowledge mm -hmm. and have combined their knowledge with our natural uh, natural paths here. Mm, so, okay. so people, there is something, you know, for, lot, for, uh, for, the for health. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as an older person feeling shy about coming, mm -hmm. I also mentioned this story that I was, I happened to pass through the American embassy mm -hmm. 
And someone said, oh, have you been in Ghana long? I said, yes. And the young lady said to me, well, I had to come down and help my grandmother. I said, why, what happened? She said she ran away from home. Ran away from home? Ran away from the United States. The old oh. lady was 81. She had packed up her bags. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And said, I am out of here. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you all do, you know, but mm -hmm. grandma's gone. And they didn't know. Oh, till wow. she finally called. They didn't know where she was. I or know anything. they were so worried about her. She called and said, I'm in Ghana. You know, if you want to <laughs> see me, get on a plane, mm -hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. So the granddaughter, one of the mm -hmm. granddaughters did. And so she was at the embassy to kind of register her grandmother because she saw that the grandmother was serious. She wasn't going back. Right, right. You know, <laughs> and I okay. always remember that because it was on the day of the birthday of one of my good friends, Helena Cooley, who mm -hmm. has been here. And one day you'll meet her too. Mm -hmm. Very dynamic woman. Uh, she came in 1966, I believe. Wow. And um, <laughs> you know, so she, she's also another that we have all these dynamic women that are still thriving right. and, and what have you. And they've been here for a very long, long time. time. Well, you know, since you have been here for a long time, you shared with me, you have had about 22 businesses here that, you know, both good and bad. And there's a lot of diasporans that are coming here looking to become entrepreneurs, trying to get into that space. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to them trying to get into the entrepreneurial space here in Ghana? Um, expectations mm -hmm. are good, but you have to kind of curve your expectations and the way you spend your money here if you're trying to start a business. Mm -hmm. If you think that you can just throw money at the business, yeah. you can't. Mm -hmm. You'll just be throwing it in the wind. Mm -hmm. um, also, I call them PPs. That is... PPs. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, patience mm -hmm. and perseverance. Okay. Those are the two PPs that I have learned to incorporate in my body and my whole um, entrepreneurship travel. Mm -hmm. And um, when you do have that patience, uh, it, it's not that you're being lazy, but you have to know that the speed of things going yeah. will frustrate you if you're deciding. Yes. If you wake up and say you want to do five things that day, already you've defeated yourself. Yeah, I can I can attest to that. I yes. know exactly what you're talking about because we're on this type of speed in the States and kind of processes moving along faster efficiency. And here things are a little bit slower paced and we're kind of like, okay, why isn't this going? Why isn't that going? And you get frustrated. And this yeah. interview is an example of that. You yeah. came at 1230 and we couldn't get started too. <laughs> we had a little hiccup, yeah, guys, yeah. okay? You know, we had rain <laughs> yeah. and so many things. Mm -hmm. So, but because you have learned to calm yourself down, I mean, mm -hmm. that could have driven you crazy. It could I can have, see, yeah. it could have. You're a professional person. Mm -hmm. I can see my cameraman, he's a professional yes. person. But uh, it doesn't matter how professional you are here, mm -hmm. If you don't have that patience and perseverance, you know, mm -hmm. you persevered through it. You said, okay, mm -hmm. we're going, we can't go this way. We'll go this way. Right. You know, and you that's what You got to roll with the punches. You and, do. <laughs> and that's where we are now. We're mm -hmm. right here at Serenity House. Oh, and it's beautiful. It's, oh, yes. shout out to Serenity House, guys. Exactly. Serenity House, Ghana. It's so peaceful and zen. And if you guys have seen any of my uh, last videos, you know that I interviewed Chaz, the owner here of Serenity House. So big shout out to you, Chaz. Thank you so much much it is absolutely gorgeous it really yes. is so with so you you know having that thank you so much for sharing that because it can be a little bit of a bewildering experience coming into another culture trying to get your business going okay you know? and i would also say too mm -hmm. to be flexible in terms of business okay you could decide all right i'm going to have an ice cream parlor because yeah. i made ice cream in the states <laughs> all right well, when you get to Ghana, then you find out there's no milk to make your ice cream, you know, mm -hmm. or maybe you got to use coconut water or something mm -hmm. like that. But there's so many other opportunities for people that mm -hmm. if you just sit down for a minute, talk to some people and find out what the needs are mm -hmm. and um, what um, you can do to fulfill those needs, you can really live a good life here. Mm -hmm. Now, let, a case in point being like uh, coconut shells. Mm -hmm. 
they are everywhere because yeah, they you can find them everywhere they cut off the <laughs> coconuts mm -hmm. and uh, throw them down okay so now mm -hmm. you've got all these streets full of coconut shells in yes. other words that's free material mm -hmm. now you think in your mind what can i do with those coconut shells mm -hmm. and believe it or not you can make a charcoal out of those coconut shells really? so if you can get the machines that grind up the coconuts mm. and then make it into briquettes, then now you've got a good export business. Wow. You, and those briquettes last longer than tree mm -hmm. charcoal. Wow. Last long and cleaner. You see, so right there is mm -hmm. a good uh, business opportunity where two or three people, maybe you and I or whatever, yeah. can come together pool our money, mm -hmm. learn how to do it at a small stage, mm -hmm. and then move on up, you see. Mm. But the, the material was free. All along the coast of uh, Ghana, uh, Ivory Coast, Benin. It's everywhere. Coconut. See? <laughs> and if you can't get enough, grow some coconut trees. All right. And sell the coconut water, which is what they're doing now. They're mm. selling coconut water on the streets. Um, well, so, so there's something for it's like there's something for everyone, and there's see there's also holes here, holes like you were saying that you can feel that you never even thought about. Really creative means of how to make a business and how to make it happen. So there's always something here in Ghana. And look at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Were you doing this in the states? Oh, uh, actually, I wasn't. So you know, really, when you come here, you discover something about yourself that you exactly. maybe never even thought of. You know, and segueing into that, you have, you know, you're the co-founder of Triple AG. You're involved in a lot of different organizations here and NGOs. So could you please tell us about Forty Acres and a Family? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Forty Acres and a Family. Well, most African Americans understand what Forty Acres is all yes. about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so instead of 40 acres and a mule, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we are incorporating um, other entities like uh, Ghanaians, Nigerians, mm -hmm. in other words, other Africans that mm -hmm. are family to us. Mm -hmm. So yes. the organization that I created this year is 40 acres and family. Mm -hmm. And basically we uh, get investments and donations mm -hmm. and build on that through agriculture, and then we take mm. that money and give it to other organizations. Oh, the major okay. organization that I fund or want to fund mm -hmm. is Triple AG. Mm -hmm. They're looking for funding to get um, a new location. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, we right now need to raise money for a building fund or mm -hmm. relocation fund. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be my little Another one say Widow Smart. My yeah, yes. your little project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, we're mm -hmm. also funding other organizations like the Thorn Foundation, mm -hmm. Rescue Me, and a couple of or orphanages. Mm -hmm. So, in, in essence, what I have attempted to do, you saw our site, yes. was mm -hmm. to, um, through agriculture, through the young people participating in your agriculture mm -hmm. to grow the money. Now that's important because in Ghana, the money loses value mm -hmm. real quick. Mm -hmm. What sure. was worth uh, 50,000 CDs mm -hmm. last year was worth $5,000. Yeah. 50,000 yeah. CDs this year is four thousand dollars right so you see where your money is depreciating yeah unfortunately mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately okay mm -hmm. so <laughs> so um what i try to do then is to teach people mm -hmm. grow your money because mm -hmm. your money's going to depreciate. Mm -hmm. You know, what you were sharing with me earlier about, you know, what you're doing with 40 Acres and Family, you know, involving the young people in agriculture, that's very important, you know, and just um, other things that you're doing with, the, gym, with um, the Thorn Foundation, Rescue Me, you know, just really giving back. I think that that's really wonderful. I really, really do. And I have to say, you are a dynamic woman. I mean, oh, I could, I I could, sit, I could sit and talk to her for hours, guys. <laughs> I mean, this is just a lot of wisdom. So you might see her for a part two okay so <laughs> you, might, you might come back but Thank oh my you. gosh i really appreciate you 
just imparting your words of wisdom, sitting down talking to me. You are awesome. A Mama shout Lincoln. out to your mother. Aww. I want to encourage her. Aww. You know, maybe she can find her own niche. You yeah. know, and um, we're looking to participate with her. Mm -hmm. You know, just you know, encourage her as much as you can. Oh, thank um, you so much. You're such an awesome woman. And I you. appreciate you for coming on the channel. Thank you. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Until next time, bye. <laughs>